Join the show next on three director of recruiting, Chad Simmons, who's really had, um, you know, great reporting. He's had his pulse on this recruitment of Justin Scott. So, Chad, this this one was really interesting because a couple of weeks ago, Scott tweets out, I'm committing on my birthday, January 31st. And I remember texting you were like, man, like he was just telling you the spring summer timeline, right? Like, is that what you recall? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I just had, I think, you know, 20 to 30 minute conversation with Justin. Just I, I want to say two, maybe three days, but I think two days prior uh, to him tweeting that out. And we, we talked in pretty much in depth about his plan, his timeline, what schools he liked to visit in the spring, uh, where he's at as far as focus on basketball right now. Uh, and he'll get back on the road in March and in April and things like that. So, uh, yeah, when he tweeted that out about the commitment date on his birthday, uh, definitely caught me by surprise. Yeah. So he, he, then he tweets out yesterday, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm delaying this, not going to commit. We're still, as we record this, his plan is to still visit Notre Dame Sunday because it looked pretty darn good for Notre Dame there. It's like he he was going to visit this past Sunday. Weather cancels that trip. Then he reschedules to this upcoming Sunday, two days before the expected commitment. So it's like, man, Notre Dame seriously looks really good there. You see the on three recruiting prediction machine is, is trending towards Notre Dame. But it does seem like, Chad, with this news – and you, you tell me what your opinion is, because the way I read it is Notre Dame should be considered the favorite moving forward, but it's really anyone's game now at this point. If he's taking this into April, maybe he takes official visits, like it's Notre Dame might have the lead right now, but it's it's pretty wide open. No, I agree with you, Mike. I think definitely if there is a team to beat, I think the favorite has to be Notre Dame at this point, especially obviously if he takes this visit this weekend. And uh, like you said, I mean, he, he, text me you know it was weather related couldn't get there this past weekend I mean is there ever weather really that bad for guys that grew up in Chicago not to get to Indiana I mean um I guess it can be but uh yeah I do you know he's been a kid that I've covered you know over the past year year plus and uh, you know, there's been times I think he's kind of quickly reacted. And I remember one time naming Ohio State, his leader coming off that visit. Next weekend he was at Miami. He loved that trip and loved Miami. And then he talks about what three or four schools kind of, you know, it's kind of down to heading into January 31st. Ohio State wasn't even in there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's added offers like Florida, like Georgia. I think he'll get down to Georgia at some point in the spring. Uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, it does inter seem interesting that, I mean, he visited – Notre Dame in the fall of that would have been his what sophomore season. He hasn't been back to South Bend since July, which is another thing. Which uh, I mean that that visit needed to happen in January before he's going to commit um, because yeah he hasn't been there in so long. But you look at he's been to Notre or excuse me he's been to Michigan. Uh, he was there in October. He went to USC this fall. He went to Miami in the fall. He went to Ohio State, but again not Notre Dame. So that's why for quite a while I wasn't feeling great about Notre Dame's chances, and then. When he put out the commitment date, you start digging. You're like, all right, Notre Dame's actually kind of the favorite there. But um, that was a short-lived kind of thing where, you know, you, you were you kind, of, kind of counting down the days until Notre Dame got that commitment. But, uh, again, delaying that. Who, who would you see as, as maybe the biggest contender moving forward along with Notre Dame? Do you think Georgia gets in there? Or does this really open the door for, for a Michigan or an Ohio State? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it opens the door. Obviously, I think he does take some visits, um, regardless of, you know, based on what we know right now, regardless of what happens this weekend, if he makes it, doesn't make it to Notre Dame, even if he does. I mean, I still obviously his plan now is to get back on the road uh, in the spring, you know, when things open back up March 1st. And I don't think he has anything set uh, as of right now this far out. But I, I do know he's mentioned schools like Michigan, uh, like USC, uh, like Ohio State, he's he obviously mentioned to me Georgia definitely got his attention. They were at his school. They watched him play basketball, offered him uh, here recently. I think that's definitely a school he'll check out uh, and visit. And I think, you know, Miami's in there as well. So I think it kind of opens the door back. I, I know USC has been involved heavily, Michigan, uh, Miami. And I think now Georgia jumped in that mix as well. Yeah, even Florida offered him, which you mentioned earlier. Chad, before we let you go, I kind of want to go – and it, it, I didn't prep you for this, but I, I did want to ask you this. 
for you've been covering recruiting for so long. It's mainly been Georgia, Florida guys, right? You're you've been a Southeast guy for so much of your career. Now transitioning to this national role for on three, covering guys in the Midwest, right? You, you have more exposure now to covering players who are, are going to a Notre Dame, right? You're, you're always going out to the Midwest and to California. What's it been like transitioning from the Southeast to the national role? Man, it's been a whirlwind. I'll say that. A little, a little overwhelming at times. Just trying to, you know, keep up, man, because like you said, my roots are in the South. You know, I've covered the Southeastern part of the country, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, Carolinas, Tennessee, some Mississippi, Louisiana, but really not much outside of that, you know, ever in my 18 to 19 years in this industry. So um, it's been kind of rebranding yourself and trying to, you know, bring that reputation I have in the southeastern part of the country to the entire country. So it's, I'll say this, man, it's, they've been very receptive. I mean, uh, guys like Justin Scott, guys like Rico Flores, guys like Drake Bowen. I mean, you know, guys that like CJ Carr. I mean, guys that I've met once or twice uh, have really kind of opened their door from their high school programs or coaches to the kids uh, to kind of let me in and kind of become, uh, I guess, that national brand for on three to help cover the best players in America. And obviously Notre Dame under Marcus Freeman is off to a great start across the country. Do you see anything different in like Notre Dame kids? Like, I think that's kind of thrown around a lot. Like he's a good Notre Dame fit. Do you see that at all? Like some kids are just kind of geared towards Notre Dame. Yeah, I think you can look at that, look that way. I mean, you just the guys I mentioned right there. I mean, just, you know, nothing against other guys going to Alabama's or Georgia's or USC's, but I think you do see that um, just how articulate they are, what academics mean to them. Um, just, just relationship based, you know, it's more than just football, more than just NIL. Uh, there's other factors that I think go deeper. And I think that's what plays in the Notre Dame's favor, kind of finding that perfect fit on and off the field. All right. That's Chad Simmons, director of recruiting over at on three. Appreciate your time, Chad. Anytime. Thanks, Mike.